Last week, I had reviewed the insanely good ROG Strix X670 Hehe Gaming Wi-Fi, which did set a brand new standard in terms of gaming excellence, but at a salty price tag. So naturally, I was curious to see what its uh, cheaper, more affordable B variant would look like. Today, we are reviewing the ROG Strix b 650 hehe gaming Wi-Fi, a board which comes with high expectations, carrying the hope of hordes of gamers dreaming for the day they can finally own a decent gaming board without having to sell a kidney. Now, fun fact for you. Did you know that the female kangaroo has three vaginas, or as uh, the Latins like to call it, last I don't even know how to correctly deal with one, so let alone three. So ROG is all about gaming with an aggressive premium appeal and its B series is a more watered down, more affordable version of its uh, um, more expensive X670 series. And it is a time where um, Asus engineering team needs to make difficult choices between what can and cannot stay in order to uh, propose a more affordable motherboard whilst keeping the very promise it makes every time in terms of power and premium, which by the way, in this case, it absolutely does. Now, starting with the obvious, we are dealing with a very robust 8 PCB layered ATX motherboard, which entails heavy consequences on about everything on this board. It means a better VRM heat diffusion, a better PCIe signal isolation, and an overall longer lifespan. A fundamental upgrade which I've never seen on a B-series motherboard and uh, happily surprised me. Design-wise, it stays close to its X670 powered theme with maybe a better graphic work spanning through the board. RGB-wise, we have our large ROG eye shading its colors through the IO roofing, which does its shine job quite prettily. But if that is not enough RGB for you, we also have four Aura compliant RGB connectors, three of which are addressable. Now, CPU socket wise, the board is rocking AMD's first LGA socket featuring no less than 1718 low pressure pins, drastically increasing our new gen AMD CPU bandwidth and allowing both PCIe 5 and DDR5 RAM introduction. And worth noting, Looking at AMD's track record, I think it is safe to say that we're going to be dealing with this CPU socket for at least three to four uh, Ryzen generations, so three to four years, which makes this motherboard and all of the motherboard using the CPU socket a very safe investment for the future. Now, VRM-wise, the Strix B650 Hehe has nothing to be ashamed about showing off an imposing 16 plus 270 amps direct phases for a total of 1260 amps, 1120 of which are CPU-centric. Obviously, more than enough to uh, operate and uh, overclock any processors thrown by the Ryzen 7000 series. But naturally, when you compare it to its much more expensive X670EE variant, it is 40% less powerful. But to be fair, when I did review it last week, I did mention that it was somewhat ridiculously overkill. And this cheaper motherboard confirms it because I did manage to get the very same gorgeous overclocking results on the B650E than I did on the much more expensive X670E. Now, to keep that very agile VRM in the cool, Asus provided a very premium two independent cooling blocks. The main one shows a nice and particularly thick radiating plate supported, as usual, by wide walls to store all the heat this block will harvest. Our side block features deep winglets on both of its sides for a larger radiating area, the all sourced by a wide trunk for heat storage. And naturally, both blocks also feature a double contact design providing a direct thermal padded contact to both chokes and power stages for a faster heat diffusion. And results are as usual, very, very good. With a severely overclocked R9 7900X, our blocks barely went beyond 50 degrees Celsius, which as seen on other Strix variant promises a minimal heat strain on our circuit, hence a reliable, stable and prolonged board lifespan. And it goes without saying that I cannot imagine this board being used with anything below an R9 
uh, 7900X, anything less would be a waste of potential, in my opinion. Memory wise, our Strix B650 EE supports 128GB of DDR5 RAM overclockable up to a very conservative 6.4 gigahertz which is the very same speed we seen on its X670E variant, always a good point. And to be fair, um, it will only have a limited impact uh, on gaming performances when compared to its DDR4 predecessor, but where you will see a sizable difference in terms of performance is on memory centric tasks such as content creating and 3D rendering. Now, staying in the memory, we have four M.2 Solid State Drive sticks, two of which are PCIe 5.0 compliant, able to swap data up to a whooping 128 gigabit per second, something I did not quite expect since we usually only have one of those on even more expensive X670 powered motherboard. So definitely a testimony of Asus complete bandwidth control. Now our two other M.2 Solid State Drive run four lanes at PCIe 4.0 standard, which translate in a still very fast 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap. But all that bandwidth does translate in a lot of heat. And thankfully Asus has equipped our board with long and thick, very thick thermo padded heat shields. This is definitely a much more classic cooling situation than seen on its Rock Strix X670E, but to be fair, its cooling add-ons I feel were overkill anyway and were more about the wow effect rather than trying to fix a problem which may not have existed in the first place. Here I am very comfortable with what the Strix B650 brings us uh, in terms of cooling components to keep our sticks away from the thermo throttling spaghetti monster. Now, expansion wise, we have three 16 slots with different speed. As usual, only the CPU linked one gets a full 16 PCIe lane treatment. Therefore, this is where you want to place your GPU for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcement. In a single GPU configuration, it can run up to a very fast PCIe 5 fueled 64 gigabyte per second. And in a dual GPU configuration, our two first 16 slots share bandwidth in a eight by four ratio at PCIe 5.0 standard, which translate in a 32 and 16 gigabyte per second worth of data swap individually, which is obviously more than enough for current video cards to run optimally. The last naked 16 slot has no reasons to blush since it runs a very respectable four lanes at PCI 4 standard, meaning up to 8 gigabyte per second, which will be great for an extra PCI based storage or a capture card. Now, let us not forget to mention that Asus has equipped our first GPU slot with its very own PCIe unlocking mechanism it introduced last year. It will make your life so much easier in your GPU retrieval adventures. Now, overall, um, the, I am thrilled to see that the B650E uh, benefited from the very same dual GPU treatment we've seen on its more expensive X670E uh, uh, variant and uh, takes full advantage of the PCA 5.0 standard. Back IO wise, first let me note the presence of an integrated back IO always pleasuring. And starting from the left, we have our HDMI and DisplayPort output for integrated graphics, which by the way is uh, now um, widely available on every Ryzen 7000 series processors. Next, we have four uh, USB second generation plugs, eight USB 3.2 generation, all able to transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second, except for this one, which has a dual channel type C, therefore able to transfer up to whooping 20 gigabit per second. Our clear CMOS and flashback button, which I'm always happy to see, a 2.5 gigabit surge protected LAN, our dual band Wi-Fi 6E able to transmit in the much cleaner and faster six gigahertz radio spectrum. And finally, our very premium 7.1 channel Realtek 4080 ALC codec, serviced by a generous 700 microfarads worth of capacitor, which will do an excellent job at rendering deep bass, but most importantly, will do a studio great job at recording as well, especially great for streamers. Overall, a more modest uh, back I.O. than seen on its X670E 
much more expensive variants. I do think that this is where we see uh, the bulk of the watering down that uh, I expected out of a, a B series. Now, chipset wise, our Strix is powered by AMD's brand new B650 E chipset, which comes in a more classic single 7 watts chip configuration, which has the benefit of necessitating nothing more than a low profile heat shield to stay cool at all times, which is always a good point. On the inside, we have a bunch of PCIe lane going in three different PCIe standard direction, but what really sets apart the B650E is that it can utilize the same amount of PCIe 5 lanes from the CPU than seen on its more expensive X670E model, and allowing a very similar PCIe 5.0 wider support as seen on this board. Now, front panel connector wise, we have our two second generation USB connectors, our 5 gigabit front panel connector, our dual channel type C able to transfer up to 20 gigabit per second and fast charge your phone up to 30 watts, which is always uh, a great add-on. And finally, we have our Thunderbolt 4 card connector, which if used, will provide a generous 40 extra gigabit worth of bandwidth. Cooling-wise, our board has a healthy 8 PWM fan connectors, one of which can support a water pump, which is what you'd expect for a B-series motherboard. I do not expect many people to go for custom cooling uh, water situation here, so I, I really have nothing bad to say. I am always sad not to see a second water pump, as usual, but I'm gonna give a break to Asus this time. Now, troubleshooting wise, well, Asus uh, provided this board with somewhat of a luxurious solution, starting with our first aid easy debugger here to signal the main stages of our boot and providing a quick troubleshoot feel of your system. But most importantly, we have a Q error screen, which will refine our troubleshooting experience to the very reason why your thing refuses to work, because it will one day refuse to work, I guarantee you that. And finally, we have our two clear CMOS and flashback button whistle on the back I.O. Overall, a very premium solution for a B-series provided uh, by Asus. So yeah, uh, very short, very quick, but very, uh, 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 what is the word I'm looking for? deserved kudos to Asus for this. In conclusion, the ROG Strix B650 He He Gaming Wi-Fi will cost you 350 bucks before taxes and happy 150 bucks lower than its X670 He powered counterpart, which is gorgeous news uh, since the uh, Strix B650E managed to keep most of the premium and important features which made the X670E so uh, uh, desirable. And despite having a 40% lighter VRM, it still is much more than enough to go on the craziest overclocking configuration out there. But most importantly, the Strix B650EE gaming Wi-Fi retains the wide PCA 5.0 uh, bandwidth support, spanning from the dual M.2 solid state drives to the dual GPU support. Put simply, Asus outdid itself here, I, I really believe so, bringing us a very, very premium motherboard to a much more affordable price point we've seen before, and uh, will probably cast a serious and uncomfortable shadow to a bunch of much more expensive X670 and X670E powered motherboards. The only remaining and natural question in my sense would be, why would you spend more money on an X670E powered motherboard when this much cheaper B650E can bring you all this? Answer, you don't. You absolutely don't. 